Today's video is taking a look at some Dallas Cowboys draft targets in round one on offense only. Now, make no mistake, the main needs for this organization unquestionably are on defense. However, there might be a scenario or two in which going offense might make the most sense. Specifically, you might create some bigger offense needs with a cut or two, mostly on the offensive line, and purely looking at the best player available. This is not how NFL teams operate, because they, they window dress, they, they include need. The best players in this year's class, they're actually mostly on offense. So just keep that in mind in terms of what makes sense there. Now, do you guys want a defensive round one draft targets video? If you guys do, I want you to type in me right now in the comment section. Let the bosses know this is something that you guys want. So is that an option there? If, if you want that, type in defensive or type me in the comments if you want a defensive draft targets video. Let's go to Dak Prescott here because that is important when it comes to discussing the possibility of the Dallas Cowboys going quarterback in round one of the NFL draft. It is only an option if Dak Prescott has not yet signed a long-term deal. And if you're trying to be the best organization possible, you've already paid Dak, but if you're still trying to be, you have to consider a quarterback at 10. It's not fun for the Cowboys, but the last thing you want is you don't sign Dak, he balls out, the defense is still pretty iffy, but you're on the right direction, but now Dak's a free agent, he says, F you, I'm out. So because of that, we're taking a look at some draft targets at the quarterback spot for the Cowboys. Before we get there, should the Cowboys go quarterback in round one? All four guys could be gone. I don't want Mac Jones, who we'll get to, but should they? Get your votes in for me, Y for yes, or type in N for no. Three names I'm looking at here that make the most sense 10 if they're there. Justin Fields, the first one up. I've been impressed with him in two years at Ohio State. When I'm looking at quarterbacks, and over the years I've, I've changed this, frankly, I'm looking for three main things in terms of what's actually scoutable. The arm, the accuracy, and the athleticism. Justin Fields checks off all three boxes. Now, it, it is fair to bring up some of the off Ohio State scheme stuff and that Justin Fields wasn't asked or forced to make a bunch of difficult reads and tight window throws and, and all that. Part of it was because the Ohio State offense ran a lot of option routes, so you're waiting to see which option the receiver takes, and it looks like you're holding him down for or staring down your receiver for a while. And he was awesome against Clemson. Eh, it took a bit of a step back a couple weeks before that against Indiana and Northwestern, but I'm intrigued by him. If he's there at 10, and the Cowboys don't have Dak Prescott under contract. He's my number two quarterback this year. I'm going to jump all over that if I were the Cowboys. Zach Wilson is next up here. Coming off a big-time breakout year for BYU. He's got the tools that you want. Those same three triple A's. Arm, accuracy, athleticism. His best plays came when he was bailing on a pocket. Sometimes clean, and his quick release makes his arm look so effortless as he throws it deep downfield. Now, he's got a good arm, a strong arm. It's not the best in this year's class, and you have to at least acknowledge the one-year wonderness of Zach Wilson. His first two years at BYU, he wasn't very good. He was pretty middling for, for a college quarterback. This past year was awesome. So again, he might go number two overall. If he's there at 10, if you haven't paid Dak Prescott, that's something you have to consider if you're the Cowboys. Next up here is Trey Lance, who, again, limited sample size in terms of actually starting football games. Of these three, the, the, the least experienced. Only played one game this past year. But I think from an arm strength and athletic perspective, the upside's right there with Trevor Lawrence. Now, he needs development. Don't get me wrong there. The accuracy can be a little iffy at times. His play style at North Dakota State was, okay, make the, the first read. If it's not there, just run. You're better than everyone else out there. The level of competition that Trey Lance faced for North, for North Dakota State, both the talent around him relative to others versus who he's going to face in the NFL, substantially different. Every time Trey Lance walked down on, the, on the, the football field, yes, he was the best football player, 
he had the best supporting cast around him as well. If he's there at 10, though, you could take him, sit him for a year, and then have to lose Dak Prescott in free agency, but you got to cover yourself at the most important position. Now, some other quarterback prospects I want to mention here briefly. Yeah, Jamie Newman and Kellen Mond are big arm guys with inconsistency issues. I don't love them. I think Kyle Trask is a backup. Davis Mills could be a late day two, early day three developmental guy, but does that actually fix your issues long term? And even though Mac Jones is fine, if you're a team like Washington or Chicago, simply put, I will never be able to invest a top 10 pick in a guy named McCorkle, which is what Mac is actually short for. His name is Michael McCorkle Jones. Uh-uh. I'm out if I'm the Cowboys at number 10 overall. Now, I want you guys to name an offensive player that you want to draft in the first round. And if you want to go with none, I'm okay with that too. But let me know in the comments an offensive player you want to draft. That question, by the way, this one right here, it'll be the pinned comment on today's video. The offensive line, which was once great for the Cowboys, has had some issues of recent years. So let's look then at potential round one targets, number 10 overall for Dallas. You're not looking at center at, at 10. You're simply not going to. But you're looking at maybe tackle, maybe guard. Four names to mention here that could make some sense. Panay Sewell out of Oregon. Rashawn Slater from Northwestern. Christian Darisaw from Virginia Tech, and Elijah Vera Tucker out of USC. The other prospects, I don't think they're worth taking at number 10 overall. So let's go with each player some more discussion on each of them here in terms of Panay Sewell. If he's there at number 10, best player on the board, I'm down. That's too good of a value and kind of fits the whole CD Lamb mindset from last year of, yeah, tackle's not your biggest need, but you're probably keeping your eye out for somebody. If you were to cut Tyron Smith, oh, he was the dream candidate then at number 10 overall. Now, he opted out this past year. He is not yet 21 years old. He hasn't turned 21 until October. So wind back the clock, folks. In his time at Oregon, when he allowed just one sack in two years, he wasn't even 20 for the most part. That, that's significant. To dominate like he did at that age is a really good indicator of long-term NFL success, kind of like Tyron Smith, actually. Now, Rashawn Slater has been heavily mocked to the Cowboys, and in the we're keeping Tyron Smith scenario, you're probably going to make Slater your year one left guard and then kick him over to left tackle once Tyron calls it a career. Now, he opted out of this year, just like Panay Sewell did, but he was awesome against Chase Young. Young did not beat him. Now, he did get beat by Zach Bond uh, in, in, in the game against Wisconsin, and that led to the only quarterback hit he allowed in 2019. But zero sacks, four hurries. I, he's what I call a shielder. He's not someone who's going to maul you a, a, as an offensive lineman, but he will do a good job of being able to turn you and protecting the, the, the quarterback. The opposite play style is that mauler, and that's what I think Christian Darisaw is. He is a bully on the offensive line. Just ask Chaz Surratt because that was a bad game for Chaz. Three-year starter at left tackle for, for Virginia Tech. His play style might fit better at right tackle, but, I mean, look, he was partially covered up in a passing adverse offense at Virginia Tech, so the, the sacks, hurries, pressures aren't the most indicative of a normal college offense, but still, he was really good for the Hokies. I don't love him at 10. He's probably more of a trade-down candidate. Like, if you move down with, like, the Bears or Washington for a quarterback and the defensive guys are off the board, I like Darisaw quite a bit. Elijah Vera Tucker's next up here. I like the positional value of having someone who could play left guard or play left tackle for you. And he played left tackle for USC this past year. His play style, though, you know what? I think he's best at, at guard. He's not an option for me, really, at number 10. I don't want to draft a guard in round one. Now, if you think he can be your left tackle, different conversation. So that's why I included him here. But at 10 or in a trade down, it's not the route I would want to go if I were the Dallas Cowboys. I just I don't think that that's a path that really fits what they should be trying to do on offense. 
couple other five offense linemen I want to briefly mention here, five guys. Tevin Jenkins is a right tackle out of Oklahoma State, so I'm intrigued by that option if you want to replace Lael Collins. Jalen Mayfield's kind of viewed as a little bit of everything. He could, depending on who you ask, could play any number of spots on the offensive line. Alex Otherwood is either a tackle or a guard. Liam Eikenberg, Samuel Cosme from Notre Dame and Texas, respectively. Those are left tackles, probably. They're not round 10. They're, they're not number 10, excuse me, overall options. So if you trade down or they're, or they're there in round two, keep an eye out for them. So should the Cowboys go draft a lineman at number 10 overall? Get your votes in for me. One for yes or zero for no. Now, if you guys want even more NFL Draft coverage, including our live NFL Draft coverage and plenty of NFL mock drafts, go subscribe to Chat Sports. The link is at the bottom of your screen. In theory, most of you guys are already subscribed, but I know not all of you are. It's youtube.com slash chat sports TV. This offseason with the draft and free agency almost here, we're going to keep you guys covered on everything going on around the NFL. And if you want in-depth draft coverage, there's no better spot. Go subscribe today. It's youtube.com slash chatsportstv. I'll put the link in the comments as well to make your lives a little bit easier. youtube.com slash chatsportstv. Looking now at the skill position side of the ball for the Cowboys. Could they take somebody to fill a spot here in round one at number 10? Running back. No, not going to happen. Receiver, eh, maybe, maybe not. Tight end, potentially. What makes things interesting for this year's class is that, at least for my own personal board, it's probably going to be one of these four players who are the best player left in the draft. Devonta Smith out of Alabama, Jamar Chase from LSU, and Jalen Waddle from Alabama, three receivers there who I love, and Kyle Pitts, the tight end. All four of those guys are legitimate round one prospects. I love them all. They're great. They just don't happen to fill a need for the Cowboys. So because of that, pick a wide receiver skill position player because Kyle Pitts is, eh, he's kind of a receiver tight end hybrid, right? Pick one for me. Before we discuss them in depth, pick one. S for, for Devonta Smith, W for Jalen Waddle, C for Jamar Chase, or P for Kyle Pitts. Let's go with the Heisman Trophy winner to start. Unstoppable this past year for the Crimson Tide. Great route runner. He's fluid. Fantastic hands. The production obviously is a major plus there. What gives me some pause, though, is that he is profoundly undersized and not nearly as fast in terms of straight line speed as you would expect for a guy listed at 175. He might have played closer to 170, guys. The production's obviously awesome. He is already 22 years old. If he's there at number 10, he would probably be the best player on the board. I don't know how good of a fit he would actually end up being, and you'd have to trade Michael Gallup, but it's at least worth discussing going through the process if you're the Dallas Cowboys. Jamar Chase next up here, kind of forgotten about because he opted out this past season, but he was dominant, just as good as Devonta Smith was, frankly, in 2019. Now, he's not nearly the separator that Devonta Smith is, but he's great in contested catches. He's strong after the catch, and in a way, kind of reminds me of a Michael Gallup type player where, yeah, he's not an elite burner, but he's going to be able to win vertically just like Gallup does, and of course, put up better production than Gallup ever did at Colorado State. In terms of best receivers, I am, I've gone back and forth. I've actually got Jamar Chase as my number one receiver in this year's class. The best fit, though, as a wide receiver for the Dallas Cowboys is actually Jalen Waddle, if you trust the medical, which is a fair concern. Reminder, guys, before he got hurt, before he broke that ankle and rushed back to play in the title game, he was outproducing Devonta Smith. Jalen Waddle was off to a better start, and then Alabama was like, okay, well, he got hurt. All of the Waddle targets also went to Smith on top of his own, and that's why he had su such a fantastic season. If you're looking to add speed at wide receiver, which if you're taking one in round one for the Cowboys, I actually think makes some sense, I would keep my eye out on Jalen Waddle, who of those three receivers might have the best chance of actually being on the board. 
Lastly, it's Kyle Pitts. And tight end is a, I'm going to go quote-unquote bigger need in terms of being able to upgrade over what you already have than receiver. I think he is a fantastic tight end prospect, the perfect fit in the modern-day NFL. Is he a great blocker? No, he is not. Does he try and give enough effort to, to make it okay? Yes, he does. As a playmaker, as a weapon, Kyle Pitts is awesome. The numbers back that out. If you're an NFL team and you're taking Kyle Pitts, and I trust Kellen Moore to do this, you're going to use him like Darren Waller or Travis Kelsey, where yes, he's a tight end. Yes, he's in line. But guess what? You're also giving him slot snaps. You're giving him outside receiver snaps. All four of these dudes are awesome. From a talent perspective, it's a no-brainer. The only problem is, if you were to draft one, you're spending your best asset in this offseason on another offensive piece. And that's dicey. When you're already good at this, you don't, you don't need a receiver or a tight end right now. If you were to take one, I think you'd probably have to move Michael Gallup during the NFL draft. 